There it is. Hello, everybody. It's Wolf Den Podcast time. Thanks for being here. I appreciate it. I am Bob. And I am Will. How you doing? We're- Some of you may know me as the other guy. The fat one. You know, I get called the other one a lot on this podcast. Do you really? Yeah. And but like, people, I think people are doing a, a, a bit. It's gotta be, because you are like genuinely I'm the like, face i'm like the popular one yeah <laughs> hello everybody don't tell anybody this is my third coffee of the day i had my third cup of coffee earlier in the day like a normal person when the sun was still up i i usually do two <clears throat> i do three is a rough one i try to do not try not try to do i generally have two in the morning and then if i need it one in the afternoon that's me. I, I do a when I get up, which is not the morning. Yeah. And then I do a, a later, a later right. before I do one of these situations. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, guys, hi. There's a lot to talk about today. Yes. Uh, a lot of weird, wacky stuff. Mm-hmm. The big, big deal news is uh, PlayStation 5 Pro, which we both kind of swore off. Yeah. We but, said that's not going to happen. But it, it was one of those news weeks where it's like, it's for real this time. Yeah. I still cannot believe it. Uh, yeah. Aside from that, we got Steam families. Yeah. Well, no, wait. I'm not on Steam anymore, remember? Because my Steam deck is broken. Because <laughs> PC gaming sucks. All right. Let's give an update <laughs> on that right off of the rip. Uh, Will gave me his Steam deck. Well, f- hold on. Uh, I gave back. him a Steam yes. deck. And then uh, he broke it. <laughs> somehow. <laughs> so I took it back to try to fix it. Uh... It is getting stuck in the boot menu. Yes. Uh, which happens when you turn the Steam Deck on while holding the three dots button. Right. Uh, it goes into the boot menu. Uh, and then even if you get past the boot menu, it thinks you're holding down the three dots button. So everything that you do is a modif. The three dots button is a modifier. Right. So it's like holding shift on a keyboard. Mm-hmm. Uh, or actually, more accurately, it's like holding control on a keyboard and then trying to type. It'll yeah. do all this fucked up stuff. Um, so I even took the entire button board. I unplugged the button board right. where the three dot button is. Still thinks you're holding down the three dot button. Mm-hmm. Maybe there's a short somewhere. I don't know. So there's it, it's, it's fucking completely unusable. Yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, I, I got to see if I can find a short, I guess. Yeah. Uh, we tried wiping it and everything, and mm-hmm. they, you even talked to Valve, and they said bring it in for a repair if you want to pay for it. It's yeah, it's like 185 bucks, I think they said. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, but they're Steam families. Yeah. So, we, so can, we can, least... <laughs> you know, it's almost, it, it's almost good oh, to yeah. be a Steam user. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we got some other news. We Summer Games Fest yeah. is back. Yes. Uh, we got uh. F- what else we got? We got a controversy with uh, my best friend Tim Sweeney. He liked the tweet of mine one time. Oh yeah, going after going after Valve. Uh, speaking I want to hear that. Valve, I want to hear about that. Yeah. Uh, f- and and of course, much more on the Wolf Dead podcast. Of course. Uh, yeah. Let's get right into the PlayStation. Well, no. Before we get into the PlayStation Five news, uh, DJ Skeletor, thanks for dropping five gifted subs. Majin Jameson, thanks for the twenty five months. Jeffrey Sorensen, thanks for the thirty three months. First time catching you guys in three weeks oh my god wow glad to be back with you oh my god thanks for being here uh jake the bad snake thank you for the 10 months um also another announcement i'll be at pax this weekend uh we're doing a signing on saturday at 12 noon at the screen wave or retro wear booth it's literally in the middle in the front okay and that's for now been warned and not that this was in the show notes or anything but like Literally a day ago, Nintendo's like, oh, by the way, we'll be there. I don't even think Nintendo announced it. It was this morning, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like, and like, I think it was, PAX was like, oh, by the way, Nintendo's going to be here. I literally looked at the floor plan. Yeah. And they were not on the floor plan. How- and then, yes, today, they, they said, oh, we're going to be there. And they're on the floor plan. Like, how does that happen? The, the biggest, you know, one of the biggest companies in gaming, all of a sudden now is going to be at your show. Like that floor plan, like obviously something was there before. Well, they 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 had to have known they were gonna they were gonna be there. But like I, this down to the wire, 
No, I mean, they were th definitely always going to be there. For some reason, they just now all of a sudden decided that they would announce their arrival there. Yeah. I don't know why PAX didn't say anything. Uh, I'm looking now to see. Okay, here's. Okay, so I'm not sure. This might be an old. No, this can't be. Okay, so. I announced that I was going to be there. Right. Uh, J Justin Silverman, who works for uh, ScreenWave. Right. Um, he tweeted at me and the floor plan to show that where the RetroWare booth's going to be. Yeah. Uh, there's no Nintendo on this at all. Which right. When I saw this, I was like, oh, that's weird. Nintendo's not going to be there. Now I have to pull up. I have, <laughs> I have to pull up the fucking floor plan. Uh, give, give me two seconds. But like, the, that's the what I was like. Nintendo's gonna be there. Why don't why don't you announce it earlier? Like, why is this all of a sudden a last minute surprise? Because they didn't want to say anything. Why not say that like Nintendo's gonna be at your show? That's gonna make people want to go to this show. So he <laughs> they okay, so here's what happened. Now 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 looking at the updated floor plan, we know mm -hmm. they literally look. <laughs> you see, you see where Nintendo's in the top right. Yeah. They literally just just made a space. They made a <laughs> space for them. They just put it just a space that didn't exist. Wow. Yesterday. That's... And, and now now it exists. So we don't know what they're gonna have. Yeah. I mean, maybe they were keeping it secret for a reason, but I doubt it. I think that, I, guess... I, I think that they just I like how I the know. yellow squares are like the important squares. So like yellow is Nintendo, yeah, Pokemon, literally. Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew baby. Donuts. Mountain Dew's gonna be there. That's the real and Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. Those are the ones we should be talking about. Yes. Also, we're going to be sandwiched between Final Fantasy uh, 14? That's 14, yeah. yeah. And Larian. <laughs> okay. Oh, Wolf Den Dad in the chat. D Duncan is at PAX. Can you get me free coffee? I'll see if I can get you some Duncan swag. If you do see any Dun King's stuff, let me know, because my wife really likes that Dun commercial. Kings. That's Ben Affleck's oh. boy band. Yeah. I understand. I forget. That you know what? Stop asking him to be Batman. He clearly likes making Dunkin' Donuts commercials a lot more. Honestly, I like those commercials. Yeah, they're funny. Uh all right. Let's dive into the PlayStation 5 Pro. Yes. Uh specs, the the leaked specs. Yes. Uh Insider Gaming can confirm that the leaked PS5 Pro spec the leaked PS5 Pro specs leaked earlier today. Okay. Leaked twice. Good this start. is insider dash gaming. Yes. That every, everyone's pointing to this article. Yes. Uh, they can confirm that the PS5 Pro specs are real and the PlayStation 5 is still tentatively targeting a 2024 release, uh, holiday release. Speaking with sources who wish to remain anonymous because they are not authorized to talk about company plans. Um, Insider Gaming can confirm that the leaked documentation from the YouTube channel Moore's Law is dead is real despite the criticism of the leaker and the leaked specs. Insider Gaming can confirm that the documentation leaked from the PlayStation development or portal which was sent out this week to a wider band of third-party developers. Early in 2023, uh, it was reported via Key2 Gaming that the PS5 Pro is under the codename Trinity and will be targeting an improved and consistent uh, FPS at 4K resolution, a new performance mode uh, for 8K resolution, and accelerated ray tracing. In addition, it was reported that Trinity will have 30 WGP and 18,000 MTS memory. So uh, I, got, I got to weigh in a couple of things here. Okay. Early in 2023, they're saying that they reported that the PlayStation 5 Pro was being codenamed Trinity and all this stuff. Didn't yes. we determine that that leak was about the slim? I remember hearing Something. all of these rumors about the PlayStation 5 Pro, and then all of a sudden they were like, here's the Slim. And I we, think we were like, wait, what the fuck? I it, it might was have been a situation where like Sony was developing both, but they were farther along on the Slim. Okay. And we might have like conflated the two to be more I think more we were the conflating yeah. the two. Uh, but that also made me think that there wasn't going to be a, a Pro right. at all. Uh, also, I don't know if I'm old and out of touch. I don't understand a f uh, one of these specs. No. I don't understand any no. of them. I've never heard of WGP until I just read it. 30 watt game power? I don't 18, know. 18,000 
mountains of memory. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> there you go. I, I, it's I, more I, mountains than there are on the planet. <laughs> What's happening? I don't what, know. What is all this shit? All right. The leaked documentation uh, also confirms rendering 45% faster than a standard PlayStation 5. Two to three times ray tracing. Four times in some cases. Well, how is that a spec? I don't know. Times what? I guess what? <laughs> Whatever a standard. What are we how many more rays can we trace? I don't know. A standard ray tracing versus like two to three ray I've tracing. I've never heard that before. Um, no, I, didn't, I thought ray tracing was just ray yeah, tracing. Yeah, ray tracing is just ray tracing. <laughs> that That's it. I didn't know you could do more than that. 33.5 teraflops. That I've heard. Yes. And that sounds like a fuck ton of teraflops. <laughs> that also sounds made up. <laughs> Uh, PSSR, PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution Upscaling for Upscaling Anti-Aliasing Solution. Okay, that's just PlayStation's version of upscaling. Yes. Uh, support for resolutions up to 8K is planned for future SDK version. Custom machine learning architecture, a.k.a. Artificial intelligence. Oh. Um, AI accelerator uh, supporting 300 tops. What the uh, fuck is <laughs> that? Computation and 67 flops of 16 bit floating point okay okay so it's got no no no, only... no don't don't try to justify it but not... they could have said anything here with a high number <laughs> not only does it have 33.5 teraflops it also has 67 teraflops is what this is saying oh i just uh the only thing that is making me believe any of this is playstation spectral super resolution upscaling sounds like it sounds very official it sounds very official it sounds yeah. like something playstation would definitely call something like well this. they had something similar on the ps4 pro that like upscaled an anti-aliased uh 1080p content to 4k and that had a specific really name. yeah remember it was like that staircasing thing they did where or the line doubling Oh yeah, that's a little. That's it's diff. It's a little different, it's but little like different. it's the same idea of like this is like this is their version of DLSS. Yes. Uh, and then the other thing is the uh, machine learning architecture. We know yeah. that they're gonna they're gonna have to shove some freaking AI buzzword in here so that of people course. think there's cool technology yeah. in it. Um. Okay. Watch the Digital Foundry video for an ex explanation and more information. I'm going to watch the Digital yeah. Foundry video because I need them to explain to me what the fuck's <laughs> going on here because I don't, I don't understand half of this shit. Uh, Insider Gaming who also shared documentation from the developer portal under the condition that it's not shared publicly or privately can also confirm that dev kits have been available to first-party studios since September of last year and third-party studios since January of this year. And from spring 2024, test kits will also be available uh, which will be identical to the final product. Insider Gaming understands that the PS5 Pro is currently aiming for a tentative holiday 2024 release, but the date could be changed due to the lack of first-party games released on the PS5 this year. Uh, again, I'm not even sure what any of these specs mean. Yeah. They seem a lot higher. Yes. 33.5 teraflops. How many, wasn't it like 18 for the PlayStation I think 4? so. 5 Pro? Wait, well, original PlayStation 5? I don't PS5, I remember teraflops, teraflops. Nobody cared about teraflops until the Xbox One X came out and like made a big deal about mm. how many teraflops. I think that was six or something. The PlayStation 5 offers 10.28. This is okay. this is more than three times. Yeah. Uh, so this sounds like a, a next gen console. This sounds like PS6. Wait, now when I googled how many teraflops is a PlayStation Five, it said IGN is saying it's ten point twenty eight, but then they're saying the Pro. Yeah, this is from right now. The the IGN is claiming the okay. Here we go. IGN broke this down a little a little more. Okay. Um. Uh. The headline imp imp the headline improvements here are to the CPU. Which okay, which is said to be identical to the standard PS5 CPU, but with a high CPU frequency mode, which amounts to a 10% increase to 3.85 gigahertz. Now that's some language. Yes, I, I I'm used to. <laughs> and the GPU, which enables faster rendering and higher quality ray tracing, powered by a 33.5 powered by 33.5 teraflops. You can be powered by teraflops. The standard PS5 offers 10.28 teraflops. However, a direct PS5 to PS5 Pro comparison would work out at around 10.28 teraflops versus 
16 to 17 teraflop. So it, is a teraflop like a a percentage? Is it like a like a scaling value? Uh, in computing, a float point operations per second, or FLOPS, is a measure of computer performance useful in fields of scientific computation that requires floating point calculations. Of For course. such cases, it is a more accurate measure than measuring instructions per second. I think comparing the teraflops is some, some sort of scaling. That is some weird math going on yeah. to compare the two. Teraflops are, 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 like you said, they're, they're like a, <laughs> all of a sudden, <laughs> yeah. like, like this generation or the, the, the pros from prior, all of a sudden people cared about Teraflops. Remember bits when systems were like 8-bit, 16-bit, and 64-bit? Yeah. And then the Dreamcast was 128-bit. Yeah. And everything like made sense because it just kept doubling. And then we stopped doing that. Now we're on Teraflops. Because the bits don't, the bits the bits don't, don't matter, matter anymore. Yeah. Bit, we got too many bits now. Yeah. We used to have, uh, we had a computer that was one, had one gigabyte on the hard drive. Yeah. Was that our first computer? I don't remember. We were like, oh my God. Yeah. Gigabyte. It could fit Duke Nukem and Doom on it. <laughs> How many teraflops is Dunkin' Donuts? <laughs> 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 uh, okay. So we understand the specs a little more. A little more. Uh, not <laughs> completely fully. Uh, I don't know uh, what to believe anymore. This, yeah. It's very strange because Sony has sold a lot of PlayStation 5s. Yes. Uh, and they even said that like they expect system sales to slow down this year. They've adjusted their forecast to expect less consoles being sold this year than initially thought. I don't think the pros of last generation did too well. Like, I don't... Like, they claimed that they sold well. But I don't think they were projecting them to sell well. Yeah, like, what's their metric of, like, well? Because people didn't... Very few people ran out and got PS4 Pros who already had PS4s. Yeah. You know? And same thing on the Xbox side. I don't know, like, who this market is for. Well, I don't want to go too far ahead, but... Right. PlayStation also claimed that they sold... That the PlayStation VR 2 sold very well. When we know that it did not. Right. There's like no way that it did. So that's another... They could just be straight up lying. Or they could uh, forecast that it's not going to do too well. Yeah. And not not have that many units to sell. Mm -hmm. um, so this could just be a way to prolong the life cycle. Or just to keep things fresh, I, I guess. I guess. Um, but I just don't see the need for it. What games aren't releasing for console because of the power differential? None. I mean... On the Xbox side of things, we know that some de uh, developers have had trouble with the Series S. Yeah, but... But that's a lower-powered machine. I've never heard anybody shitting on... Like, any developers being like, I can't... We can't release this on PlayStation 5 yeah. or Xbox Series If X. anything, like, people are saying, like, these systems are so powerful they can release anything on them. Yeah. So, it just... It doesn't make... I mean, last generation, like, it didn't make sense to release pro versions or like mid-cycle upgrades to the xbox and the playstation 4 but this generation makes even less sense than that because these systems are already so powerful and can already do so much like very few games like are struggling right now with hitting like the frame rate that it needs to and i think we as consumers have gotten better at not expecting everything to be 4k locked and it's like 60 locked we're accepting like of lower resolutions for higher frame rate or higher resolutions for lower frame rate if that's what is necessary for a stable game yeah i think that's what's so, so i i just kind of assumed that there was a decent amount of games that were uh taking a hit for either uh resolution or frame rate yeah uh just to be on the playstation 5 and I saw a tweet floating around today that pointed at this. Uh, there are only four, maybe even three PlayStation 5 games that do not run higher than 30 frames per second. Okay. And that's it. Yeah. I thought there'd be more than that. So you have Gotham Knights. Yeah. <laughs> Game, games not run very well. Industria and The Quarry. And I also heard The Medium. And, and The Medium 
that's the one where it's like split in half, yeah. isn't it? The, yeah. So like it's rendering two worlds at once. So that makes a little bit of sense yeah. why it wouldn't uh be higher than thirty well, frames a second. All right, so Gotham Knights is a bad game. That 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 game that was they were going to release it on PS4 and Xbox One, mm. but because they couldn't, they were optimizing it poorly. They just ported it over to the next gen systems, cancel the last gen systems. Uh, the quarry is Charlie like, Fenn says it's a movie. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's what I was going to say. It, it's like, uh, it's like a quantic dream game. It's like, um, heavy rain okay. or, um, until dawn. No, it's, I, it's I a, understand. It's it, a it, quick time game. It was, uh, so like that to be 30 frames per second, like is understandable. Yeah. So that, that's, uh, yeah. uh, uh, an artistic choice. Yeah. Uh, so that's crazy. I, I mean, I'd, I'd imagine they're, they're, most games are opting to just lower the resolution. Yes. I, I'd imagine that not... I'd imagine there's a ton of games that are only 1080p or, or even some lower than right. that. Um, so that's why I'm wondering why we need a, a whole new refresh. Is it to hit the 4K spec? Which P, I feel like people don't really care. No. Like I, especially PC gamers. Yeah. PC gamers are the ones who are touting that they have so much power and stuff because they've got like ten thousand dollar machines. Yeah. I I think every PC gamer I know is two K or less. Yeah. I don't think any PC gamers because they'd that rather I know, have the high refresh rate. Yeah. And get that at 1080p better than you can at 4K. Yeah. 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 So. That's interesting. It's it's it just doesn't feel like this is a necessary jump at all. No, I, I don't. Yeah. Know. What what do we what do we need out of a new console right now? Is it four times more ray tracing? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. And I don't understand like why 8K is such a, so important when like nobody I know has an 8K TV. It's literally I, to sell the console. That's yeah, it. That's the only like, reason to have a little uh, a spec. But I don't think that warrants a whole new version of this system. People are still buying this system. People are just now getting their hands on this system yeah. because it launched during a pandemic. Like, And for like two, three years, it was A, hard to get, and B, like it was, it's still expensive, and people are just now being able to afford them. Yeah, how much is this going to be? Yeah. This is not going to be five hundred dollars. No, and I doubt they're going to lower the price of the standard PlayStation Five. This might be like seven hundred dollars. Yeah, <laughs> that would be so not worth it. Yeah, absolutely not. The, the The slim made a lot of sense because yes, they couldn't really. They had a hard time manufacturing the or getting enough of the original out there. Yeah, uh, and there was a lot of like weird little quirky issues with with the original. Yeah. Uh, some of them were thermal issues. Uh, so they fixed those little. They they made those little tweaks. Mm -hmm. Made a smaller, sleeker version that's not that much sexier but it's sexier enough yeah uh that one made sense the slim version made sense this one uh it's I, still I not just, that slim but yeah i just don't understand what we're missing like like uh the last couple of console generations you could see the difference you could be like we need this in our, yeah. in our games even this console generation it was the smallest jump between console generations, but like you couldn't deny that the lighting looked a lot the better. The lighting looked a lot better. The SSD, the SSD is like yeah. the most important thing that they added. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Maybe we need a bigger drive because everyone's downloading games. Yeah. But that's that's it. I, I don't I don't really understand. Yeah, Maybe something to do with the network connection so that we can have our fucking PlayStation portal that works. But But uh, even then, I don't think so. Like what more can you do with the network connection that you can't already do with have a Wii U sort of proprietary connection, but the portal doesn't have any other proprietary right signal in it. So you are right, and like I it, mean, that could be a firmware update, right? It doesn't have to be like an actual piece of hardware thing that that is different. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know. It just it it just seems like and also too like the article said, there's no first party PlayStation game coming out this year that would take advantage of like a pro model. Yeah, it, this whole thing just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It's possible that this is something that they were thinking about and might not even do. Right. Just like I, we've been rumoring about the the Switch 2 for yeah. years. Yeah. And uh, that was supposed to happen this year, and they're just like, no. Nah. Like, yeah. it, things could change. Mm -hmm. so Same it, thing with Xbox. We saw a bunch of leaked Xbox stuff. Yeah. That stuff might not, it just might not happen. Well, uh, in that 
podcast that they did, Phil Spencer did say they're coming out with another, they're working on another system that will be the most advanced leap in gaming ever. Yeah, that's also insane. Yeah. You can't, we've had some pretty fucking phenomenal leaps in gaming Yeah, 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been getting worse and worse since yeah. then. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, that's another thing that makes me kind of believe this is that Xbox straight up was like, yeah, yeah we're going to have another console soon. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know why I believe that one more than I believe this one. I think it just because Xbox needs to shed the the Series S. Yeah, I think I think it's just because like this, nothing about this makes sense. I mean, a, a more powerful console, sure, whatever, but there is no need for a PlayStation Five Pro. Yeah, in this point in time. Right. So, uh, K Jack in the chat just linked us this article. Uh, new Xbox console certified in Korea. Oh, uh, handheld. Handheld? What? Oh no, it's it's question marks. Okay. They, they they don't actually know. New Xbox dev kit was rated in South Korea yesterday by the uh, National Radio Research Agency. It's unclear what this console is, but there are a couple of possibilities, such as all the leaked Xbox Series X and separate handheld and blah blah blah. So, uh. Yeah, it's probably the thing Phil Spencer was talking yeah. about. So. Getting weird. Getting yeah. weird around here. I um, hope that the next N Nintendo console is classified as the same generation as these things coming out. Yeah. I hope that they're not, I hope we're not like classifying Nintendo as a whole generation behind. That'd be so weird. I don't think so. Yeah. I don't, a, a generation isn't the technology. It's the time that the system... Yeah. Well, released. technically, the Switch was in last generation. That's what I'm saying, yeah. which is dumb. I think that's stupid. It should have been ahead. It should have been the next generation. I mean, yes, but also the technology does like factor in because it wasn't any more powerful. It wasn't any more powerful than the Wii U. Yeah, but so. the the Wii wasn't any more powerful than the GameCube, and it was a whole generation later. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, I I don't think the actual technology in it should matter. I think it should be the time that the thing was released. Right. I mean, you know, counter argument that the Wii U was such a failure. I guess everyone just considered cut your losses and we'll just count the Switch as part of this yeah, they, generation. They should move the Switch to the next generation. Yeah. Uh, all right. That's PlayStation 5 Pro, yeah. I guess. Uh, Charlie Fenn says, we are talking about this new one and 8K. What about the original and 8K? Can't that do it? It could do 8K 30, uh, but yes. no games do it because it's such a nobody needs that mm -hmm. and it's really hard to achieve but, but with the with the stuff that's in it yeah uh this new one they're saying we'll have something that'll make it a little better but if you just pack more power into something you'll be able to get the 8k out of it yeah. for some games maybe fucking uh uh astro's playroom yeah technology says the dreamcast could emulate gran turismo 2 at twice the resolution as ps2 with anti-aliasing less than two years after it released on PS1. That's a generation leap. I mean, a generation leap... The biggest generation leap to me is Super Nintendo to N64. Yeah, absolutely. That's like, That was, like, mind-blowing. Yeah. I mean... And how could you ever come close to that ever again? <laughs> even, like, 8 to 16-bit, like, Nintendo to Super Nintendo, and even, like, yeah. N64 to GameCube... Like those generations, the leaps, they weren't as big as SNES to 64, but like you could still notice it. Like yeah. there's a noticeable difference between uh, Mario on NES and Mario on SNES. There's a noticeable difference between Mario 64 and Mario Sunshine Mario. Yeah. The more like the, the more advanced technology got the, you know, the less and less the improvements became. They yeah, it just became so like my like you look at the it's last the law of, of diminishing returns. Yeah, you look at the Last of Us on PlayStation Three, and then the Last of Us remastered on PlayStation Four. Like you have to look to see the differences, but like if you show it to a random person on the street, they're not going to notice the difference. Yeah, the comparisons they were doing was was laughable. Yeah. We would see them on Twitter, and we're like, "You're really marketing this as a yeah. different game." Sometimes it even looked worse. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, all right. Let's. There's more PlayStation there, stuff. I wanted yeah. to also talk about uh Sony's halting PlayStation VR two production, which is crazy. 
Yes. After producing an excess of 2 million units of its latest virtual reality headset, Bloomberg is reporting that Sony is hitting pause on production to try and shift its unsold inventory. The PSVR 2 launched last February at $549 as an accessory for the PlayStation 5. But IDC data suggests that shipments have uh, declined each quarter since. Bloomberg suggests that the problem is a lack of content for the headset. The PSVR 2 is compatible with a handful of AAA games, including Horizon Call of the Mountain, Gran Turismo 7, and entries in the Resident Evil series, as well as a range of smaller titles. But 549 at 549 the headset costs more than the PS5 itself, so expectations are high. Bloomberg notes that Meta and Apple have faced similar content challenges with their own headsets. It, it's it's just VR is a little dumb. <laughs> That's what the problem is. It's a little dumb and too expensive. It's it's a niche and cumbersome. Yeah, it's a niche market. It's an enthusiast market in an already enthusiast market. Yeah, you know, you put it on and you're like, whoa, for like. 10 minutes yeah and then you're like get me out of here yeah like it yeah it it's fun you can have fun with it but the they i think these companies still think it's like a lifestyle change that like yeah. this is gonna be our future going forward i believe that but you're not even close to there yet. no and and like you look at like all the content that's successful for it it's still just video games and like most people don't want to put a thousand dollar headset on their face to play video games. They already have a TV for that. Yeah. I mean, I say this all the time, but if it was just a small little thing of those little glasses you just put on your head, that'd, yeah. be, that'd be fine. Yeah. If you put VR in this thing, like, yeah, yeah, sold. Yeah. Yeah. But so this is interesting because Sony did come out like a, like a month ago and say they're going to put uh they're gonna make the playstation vr2 uh work on a pc yes they're gonna enable that uh, uh, uh they're gonna enable that to work well, which yeah. was one of the major criticisms with this thing is because it's a cool headset that only works on the playstation 5 and there's no reason why it can't also work on a pc yeah um it would be one of the best headsets to get if yeah. it wasn't tethered to a playstation 5 um I'm excited for that. I will break it when it uh, uh, is enabled to work on a PC. I will break it out and try it because it is slightly better than the Quest 2 that I have. Right. That I also never use. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'll give it a try again. That's going to be a good way for them to move a couple more units. Yeah. They're claiming this is because there's not a lot of content. I mean, I, I just don't think. I mean, they're. There, there, there's never been content there's for just VR. never been the killer app like they, every, they need a mario yeah you know? well half-life alex was supposed to be that half-life alex was that but uh it's on pc and yeah. you know the, you gotta do all that i think there you know every every year like there'll be like oh half-life alex is the game you gotta play in vr um Resident Evil 4 is the game you got to play in VR. Yeah. You know, there's always like the game you got to play in VR and then you play, but like you play it like you do every other VR game. 20 minutes. Oh, this is cool. And that's it. There's a game that I really wanted to play. Uh, it's a battle royale. Mm -hmm. um, I already forgot the name of it. Guys, what's the, what's the VR battle royale? <laughs> um, it looks awesome. I learned that the, I was like, I could play it with Hannah. Because yeah. we have two VR headsets. Right. Apparently, the company that made it was bought by Meta, so it's a Quest exclusive. Oh. So you can't even... Yeah. And maybe you could... I When the VR... PlayStation VR 2, you know, is done, I, when they en enable it on the PC, I could maybe play it on PC. Yeah. I but did... Population uh, 1. Yeah, something yeah. like that. I saw that there's... um. There's now a, it's called, they're called Flat 2 VR Studios, and they are a new gaming studio developing officially licensed VR ports uh, of flat screen games. So, oh, no, wait, sorry. I, I got this backwards. I thought they were going to port VR games to like flat screen oh. televisions. They're going to, they're doing the opposite. So, never mind. Why, why do you need a whole company for that? I don't know. <laughs> I guess people like want to get into the VR. They better do something to the game. Yeah. Like, I guess, 
you know, like people want to get in the VR game and like they don't yeah. know how to do it. So here's a company that'll do it for them. Yeah. Like that makes sense. I believe in VR. I think it's really cool. It's just expensive and it's uh, it's complicated and it's not worth all of the effort. Yeah. Uh, I, I, it's cool to like go to a friend's house and try it for like a second, but yeah. like I mean there's people I mean there's people who are like really into it and there's people who like uh only do that. Like I I I've heard of people like uh playing golf with people, you know. Yeah. Uh like uh that's their like hangout spot. Yeah, you know, they go in VR and do that. There's people who do it with the uh, VR chat. You know, mm -hmm. like that's all fine. I would like to try the Apple Vision Pro because that looks really cool. But like, I'm I don't want to spend thirty five hundred dollars on one. Like, it's just what would you do with it? Exactly. You, you're gonna put it on and you're gonna open up your Chrome browser and go, yeah. whoa! I can pin this here. Yeah, <laughs> I did see a cool app where like you can um, pick different TVs throughout time and like pin that like to your Oh, like Space. the Chrome window is a old school TV. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's I, he, here's my when the Apple Vision Pro came out, mm -hmm. I was seeing a lot of videos of people walking through their apartments, pinning different YouTube videos around the apartment. Yeah. And it would it would save in the spot. Yeah. You know, and they'd walk around. And they'd be like, "Here's I'm watching soccer here. I'm watching uh, uh how to basic. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I was like, that's just having tv screens yeah you paid thirty five hundred dollars for the apple vision pro to put more tvs in your apartment yeah i don't i don't know man you got an ipad in the freaking kitchen you yeah. got a tv in the living room you got your laptop posted up somewhere you could just do that you yeah could just, you don't need a thirty five hundred dollar headset strapped to your head yeah i there's really nothing that it can do that like a regular ass computer can't do yeah that's the thing like they expect you to just have this on and it's it's your life now there's there's something to different input methods and and experiencing the content in different ways but there's a trade-off and the trade-off doesn't seem worth it yeah and the trade-off is a lot of money and having a big metal thing strapped to your head yeah I, it's not it's not going to be something i'm interested in until uh there's a killer app or i uh don't have to have a big metal thing strapped yeah. to my face. I'd rather it be like just a pair of glasses. Yeah. And I think we're close to getting somewhere where it's a pair of glasses. We've seen when companies like do AR with like a pair of glasses, but I don't think it's like consumer ready. Right. Or anything like that. I think Zuckerberg made a stupid video where he was like shitting on the Vision Pro. Yeah. And I was like, I'm kind of with him though. He's kind of right. <laughs> like, like Apple made like, like, their user experience is top notch. They yeah. probably made everything really cool, but the Meta Quest Three is a fraction of the price. Well, I think that's and why can do so much of the. I same think that's stuff. why this is specifically the Vision Pro. Mm -hmm. Like they sold, sold this version at a high price for the enthusiast community to like test the waters, and then when they feel confident enough, they're going to release just the regular Vision, which is going to be significantly cheap. hopefully significantly actually no it'll still be expensive because apple tax but it should be significantly cheaper than uh the pro version i think they shouldn't have even bothered i, I think they should have waited until it was uh, at, at least a visor yeah you know and then fine thirty five hundred dollars sure if it could do all the same stuff but it's yeah. like a pair of glasses or a visor or whatever that's fine especially because it has a fucking whole big ass battery that you yeah. put in your pocket like that could be the computer yeah Anyway, that's it for the PlayStation VR 2, right? Yeah. That's what we got to yeah, say that's about it. it. It's, I mean, it, it's a small story because, like, you know, obviously. Yeah, the, obviously they didn't the sell production. any of the dumb thing. Yeah. It, 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 that was another, another story when that launched, and people were like, wow, this thing's really cool. And I put it on, and I was like, what's cool about yeah. this? It's the same shit that I've been using. Anyway. Uh, hey, Rock and Val. Thanks for gifting some subs, dude. And DJ Skeletor, thanks for gifting a sub to Wolf Den Dad. Oh, God. <laughs> he can't pony up his own money? He's not going to know what to do with that. Uh, G. Garrison, G. Harrison, thank you for the 14 months. Hey, Super Wolf Bros, a couple of weeks late on my resub due to the app not allowing primes. That's totally fine. You can be as late as you want. Charlie Fenn, thank you for the five months. Rarely got to catch this live. B. 
Being in the UK, just came here to renew my Prime sub. Feel like I spam Will with random gaming stuff as I'm now weirdly owning the nickname of his only friend on threads. <laughs> so have to give some back for that. Thanks, Charlie. Uh, and Lorian, thanks for the 14 months. PlayStation, we don't need a PS5. We need an actual good portable handheld. Love you guys. Thank you. That's true. That is true. I would rather have like a like a PlayStation portable than a portal, you know, like, cause it's yes. obvious that like gaming handhelds are like back in here to stay. And they gave us some like dumb half measure. Uh, you're re both reminding me now that I, I look at threads now, like <laughs> in bed, like right before I go to bed, yeah. I get bored of Twitter and I'm like, let's see what threads is doing. Yeah. And I like just scroll through threads. I, I posted for the first time in weeks last night because Sony said, do you have a retro Sony product? Show it off for a chance to be featured. And I was, I, I was like, let's see how that did. I posted, uh, how old are we talking? And it's a PlayStation yeah. Vita mm -hmm. uh, with my Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker save because I was just going through my camera roll right, trying right. to find something to post. Uh, their tweet has 80 likes. My has 73 likes. Oh. I, almost, I almost ratioed Look them. at that. Get them. And I hope they, I hope they feature this yeah because this is my hacked playstation v <laughs> and that would be cool that would be very cool i was also i was gonna send them a picture of this the tv oh yeah that's a that's a retro sony product anyway um where are we let's talk We're about on to steam news let's talk about the steam families Hello! We are excited to announce Steam Families, available today in the Steam Beta Client. This is how you're going to take all of my games. Yes. And you're how you're going to look at my library and go, okay. I'm going to laugh. <laughs> uh, Steam Families is a collection of new and exciting family-related uh, features. It replaces both Steam Family Sharing and Steam Family View, giving you a single location to manage which games your family can access and when they can play. Uh, to get started, you can create a Steam family and then invite up to five family members. You can manage your family uh, from your Steam client, mobile device, or web browser. Uh, family sharing. When you join a Steam family, you automatically gain access to the shareable games that your family members own, and they will also be able to access the shareable titles in your library. Hold on, shareable titles. I think not all titles will be shareable. Like, the developer has to, like, enable that. That's a little concerning. Well, I, I'd imagine maybe multiplayer games. Maybe yeah, there might, there might be an issue there. Mm -hmm. uh, the next time you log into Steam, this new f uh, family library will appear in the left column in the left column of a subsection of your games list. You maintain ownership of your titles, and when you purchase a new game, it will show up uh, in your collection. So, so the chat is saying that it's opt out. So I think that means that. Uh, it's enabled by default that you okay. can do the family sharing, but a developer can opt out if they don't want to do it. Okay. Uh, best of all, when you start playing a game from your family library, you will create your own saved games, uh, earn your own Steve achievements, and access uh, to the workshop files uh, and more. Family sharing enables you to play games from other family members' libraries, even if they are online playing another game. If your family library has multiple copies of a game, multiple members of the family can play the game at the same time. For more detail, look at how family sharing works. See the FAQ below. So we both have like Half-Life yes. 2 or whatever. Yeah. So that means if we had four people on our plan yeah and we had two copies of half-life 2 that then means... two people can play half-life yes. 2 that's pretty at the same time yes that's pretty cool uh yeah family sharing is uh is a feature that developers uh may opt their games out of for technical or reasons uh at any time uh parental controls uh i mean we're not kids <laughs> yeah we don't care about we don't that. care about that uh, child purchase requests. Uh, oh, this is concerning. I'm a dad. Oh, this is kind of this is a good idea, actually. We understand a common and sometimes time-consuming task for parents is purchasing games for their children. They usually require that parents complete a gift purchase or let their kids borrow a credit card. To streamline this process, family uh, Steam Families introduces a new payment option where a child account can request an in-family adult to pay for their shopping cart. The adult can approve and pay for the purchase from their mobile device or email. Once approved, all games from the shopping cart will be added to the child's account. That's kind of cool. Yeah. That's kind of a cool idea. That'd be cool to have. That'd be cool for Apple to have. That'd be cool yeah. for 
any like yeah. software based yeah. company to do. So yeah, you can join. Uh, it's in beta right now to test the new uh, families feature. We need to opt into the Steam Family beta. Oh, we need to. Okay, let's. I'm I'm going to Steam right now. All on, right. on my Mac. I'll we're let me pull out my Steam right Deck. <laughs> so here's the thing. Uh, you can jump between families, but yes. you have to uh, wait a year. Yes. I think when you leave a family. You have a whole year before you can join another family. Here's what it says in the FAQ. Steam families are intended to contain your immediate family. As major life events can change who lives in your household, it is understandable that someday you may need to join a new Steam family. Oh, my God. This is so <laughs> Adults weird. can leave a family at any time, however. Children uh, cannot. That sucks. Yeah. Uh, they will need to wait one year from when they joined the previous family to create or join a new family. Children. Oh, okay. Children cannot leave a Steam family um, themselves and must be removed by an adult in the family or by Steam support. As it is rare that a family member leaves the family, each Steam family member slot has a cooldown of one year before a new member can occupy that slot. Uh, okay, that's more reasonable. So, so yeah. one year from joining the initial family. So yes. a year from now, you can jump ship and immediately join another family. Yes. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So there's only five people that could be in a family. Yes. So you got two kids. Yes, they don't have. We're two people. Yes, so that only if, eventually they might need to get on Steam. Yes, you know eventually. So then there will only be one slot. Left. Well, we're gonna start them with a real system like a Switch first. Okay, and then we'll now a Switch has eight family yes. members in the family. <laughs> yes, plan. so there's, I think it's just the two of us. Oh, and Hannah, <laughs> Hannah's on. Okay, it. so that was that was a that was a whole thing. I was like, I think it's time to. I think it's time to, to add you to my to, to make a big step in our relationship. <laughs> I'm gonna put you on my, on my Nintendo Switch. See, see, back in my day, it was combining our DVD collection. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. that's a sacred place for yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I have the option. Steam client. Oh, Steam client beta participation. So uh, where I, do you see that? In the it's under interface. Interface. I don't know if you're gonna see it on your phone. I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna show this on screen right here. So we got it here. Uh, client beta participation. No, it's not. Uh, right. Steam, Steam families beta. It's right there. Okay. Do it on your Mac. Yeah, I'll launch Steam on here. You go to settings. You go to interface. Steam families beta. Restart required. Do not restart my computer. I will kill you, Gabe. <laughs> oh, it's restarting Steam. That's fine. All right. So that's good. Bounce for like twenty minutes. Now I'm pretty much mainline Steam. For all my games. Right. If it, if it comes out on uh, PC as well as all the other consoles, I'm getting it on uh, right. on Steam. So uh, this library about to be huge. Right now I got Helldivers. You can try out Helldivers. I well, I actually like can't do anything because you don't have yeah. Steam Deck right now. Uh, I mean, you could just plug in a controller. You could play it docked with a controller. I could, but then like, what's the point? The whole point of like is, is I like playing it in bed. Or on the toilet. <laughs> I understand. I understand. Uh, Holy Lettuce says, so we just did families, and it's five plus the starter of the family? It's technically six? Oh. Oh. I did not know that. Yeah. Okay, that's good. That's a lot. I don't think Zim is ever going to need uh, his own Steam Deck. No. It took a long time to, to reload uh, Steam right after I did Uh, will this mean no more sharing games by signing into the PC of the person now, of the other person? Signing into the PC of the other person. No, I think it's you You sign into your own account on your own machine, and the library will just be there. Yeah, you don't have to share password. I mean, you could yeah. obviously just have somebody else's games if you just log into their account mm -hmm. on your computer. Uh, but this way, you don't have to share passwords and stuff. Yeah. And... Everybody gets their own cloud saves. This is like a way cleaner way to do it. Yeah. Uh, I kind of wish more um, like Microsoft and Sony and Nintendo did that. Yeah. You know? They just know they can get away with people buying multiple copies yeah. of the same games. Uh, okay. So I did it. Uh, how do I get back to? I hate their UI is so bad. <laughs> how did I even get to the settings in the first place? Uh, oh, you're in the browser? No, I'm on uh, I'm I'm on, on the web client. I mean the 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 Mac 
client. Um, you got to go to like to click on Steam in the top corner and go to preferences. It's actually not there. Huh? It's it's not. It just says Finder. I, it's it, it's bugged out. The beta Weird. is bugged. Oh, this boy. is not Steam is not a Mac thing. Yeah. <laughs> I can go to big picture mode. Try that. Big picture mode. Yeah. Is usually better. It's gonna take over the whole computer. It's gonna fuck everything oh. up. Oh no, it doesn't. It goes in a little window. That's oh, actually it's actually better. The little picture mode. <laughs> little picture mode. Uh, menu. Oh, it's like <laughs> gotta load. Uh, settings. Uh, interface. Family. Try the new Steam Families beta feature to enable updating library parental control purchase requests for your family. Select. Select. Take it a long time. Oh, mine mine hasn't even like booted up yet. <laughs> yeah, it's pro I mean, I'd imagine that the beta is uh not yeah. at all optimized for Mac right now. All right. Well, I guess I guess uh I'll have to figure this out later. Yeah. Maybe I'll uh let me leave the big picture. Oh, that was probably a bad idea. Anyway, uh, Bob joins Will's Steam family and suddenly has access to all the wa waifu games. <laughs> oh, and suddenly Will has access to all the waifu yeah. games. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, I got my I got the stuff in the corner for Steam. Now I can go to preferences. I can go to family. And it's still This might have to be a PC thing. Yeah. Oh no! You click on it and it brings you to the. Okay, this All is right. it. This is it. I think this is it. I don't know how much of this I want to show uh, on screen. Create a family. Create a family. I would yeah. love to create a family with you, Will. Uh, enter family name. Wolves. Yeah. Great. Adult. Me. Yeah. <laughs> Invite a member. Okay. Searching my friends list. Are we friends? Yeah. Yeah, because it's like you. Yep. And my dry bread are like the two people who pop up in my list yeah. all the time. It says invite <laughs> as an adult or invite as a child. Well, I have to renew my driver's license, so I guess <laughs> uh, adult. <laughs> all right. You you've been invited to my family cool. plan. If Steam ever like loads on this fucking <laughs> thing, that was I easy. Will accept. Yeah. That was easy. And then you can cancel the invite or resend the invite. Yeah. Very cool. Mecha Dragon, what icon is that? Well, yeah, that is a picture of Tom Hardy from Inception. I got that. That has been my Steam icon since Inception came out, and I have not changed it. The <laughs> tagline says underneath it, and it's something like, you can't tell from this picture, but I am awesome. Don't know if you've noticed, but this guy is awesome. Yes, That's what it says. <laughs> something like that, yeah. And don't don't worry about mine. You don't yeah. have to worry about you mine. You don't have to worry about that. All right, that was easy. Yeah. So uh, we'll see how that goes. What do you have that I don't have? What games do you have that I that I, I don't know? I, I have a lot of, like, old Humble Bundle games in there. I got the Max Payne trilogy in there. I've got the Arkham trilogy in there. Uh... I don't know. I don't. I have Hell. I have Hellblade two, the Hellblade one. Sorry, yeah, I don't have a lot that like you're missing. There might be like one game that you see like, oh, okay, maybe Arkham, maybe I Arkham. Know. I don't need to replay I got, those games. I got this game American Arcadia because I really like the demo of it, and I've heard it's like got a really good like story, and I, I wanted to play that, but. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a way to compare libraries uh, with people who... You can compare, like, games that they've played. I don't know if there's a way to, like, look up other people's libraries. That seems I think like, you... Seems like that'd be a breach of... You'd have to be friends I, with them at I least. guess, yeah. All right, well, there you go. Yeah. That's uh, Steam family sharing. Uh, that'll be a fun time. Yes. Uh, in the meantime... Now that we're here, speaking of libraries, yeah, <laughs> why don't we do? I don't have a button yet for this. We gotta do this. Backlog! 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 Back back 
Hey, guys. It's backlog time. Will, what's the backlog? Backlog is a segment of the show. It used to be its own show, but now it's a segment of this show where we go through our video game collection. Every game we've ever bought, we've put into an Excel spreadsheet. That needs to be updated dramatically. It really <laughs> does. Uh, over 900 games over... 30 years, 40 years almost, because I'm an old fart. And today we're going to pick one at random and talk about it, regardless of whether or not we've played it. 900 and what now? Just 900. 900. All yeah. right, we're going to generate, and we're looking at, that's weird, 890. That's pretty high. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Ooh, this is a good one. It is um, Jedi Fallen Order for the Xbox One. Okay. So this was the first... What do they call this series now? The Fallen this is the, series? This is the Jedi, uh, the Star Wars Jedi series. This is what Star they call Wars it. Jedi this is the series. first game in the series. This is Star Wars Jedi colon Fallen Order. Okay. Um, published by EA, developed by Respawn, released on the Xbox One. That's how I played it. Uh, also on PS4 and PC. Um, I have not played enough of this game. I've played a little bit of it and I really liked what I played but I played it way after the game came out. Yeah. I played it on uh I played it on I think Steam Deck and the Asus Ally but the problem is this game has a really bad EA launcher. Yeah. And it doesn't play very nicely with any of those handhelds. Right. And sometimes it like the launcher messes up and doesn't work. Sometimes I like I got to log in and I don't know what the fucking login is. On the Steam Deck it it works great on the Steam Deck besides the launcher. The launcher ruins yeah. the game on the Steam Deck, so it makes me not want to play it. Right. Uh, doesn't have that problem on a console, you know, a real video game system. It just <laughs> launches and it's fine. Um, but yeah, no, this game, I didn't finish it, but I kind of wish I did because this is hands down the best EA Star Wars game. Yeah, I believe like, that. Period. It's one of the best Star Wars games in years it's pro it might be one of the best Star Wars games, period. It's I just really a, like what I play. It's just a really well-designed, really well-thought-out game. It's a little hard. I played it on a harder difficulty, I think. Yeah, I kept having to bump down the difficulty because I think, in my mind, I'm used to like the older Jedi games, like uh, Jedi Outcast or The Force Unleashed, right. where those are just like hack and slash. This game is more of like the... It, it's a Souls game. Yeah. And like you have to play it like a Souls game where you actually have to think about the combat. You have to strike at the right time. You have to parry at the right time. You have to dodge at the right time. And like that took me forever to wrap my head around. But like once you do get in the swing of things, like it feels like incredible. It just feels so good. You actually feel like you're sword fighting rather than just hitting a button and like bashing a baseball bat against somebody's head. Yeah, there's some Star Wars games where the lightsaber doesn't feel like it does anything. It just feels like you're just flailing it around yeah. and damage is happening around you. But in this game, the lightsaber actually connects to stuff and does things. Yeah. Uh, so it's 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 great. Other than that, it's just a well designed game. Yeah. From, from what I've played, uh, the traversal is really nice. The yeah. the 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 way you're parrying uh, blaster shots from stormtroopers yeah. is really good. Uh, I haven't really gotten into any like actual lightsaber duels in the game. Yeah, um, those come later because you do run into uh, the Inquisitors, um, you know, the secret uh, team uh, of Darth Vader's secret team that goes out and hunts any surviving Jedi. From I have Order seen a lot of spoilers from yeah. this game. And oh it, yeah, there's a lot of spoilers. It makes <laughs> me want to see the game through to the end because yeah. I I do like uh, what I. I do like what I've seen of the story. Yes. It's it's a very well told story. Um it it's it doesn't it doesn't dramatically like change or reveal anything about Star Wars like the Star Wars lore. Right. Um but it does like create new and interesting and unique scenarios that make sense within the world of Star Wars. Like for like the big thing I think that this contributed to Star Wars canon is you remember in Obi-Wan when they go to that, I forgot the planet they go to, but he basically sees the crypt of like all the Jedi that are slain, like floating in tubes. Yeah. That's from this game. Right, right, yeah. right. I did hear, I do remember that. Yeah. Because yeah, uh, I, I saw some, yeah. I saw the Obi-Wan series <laughs> yeah. and then I saw that uh, there were parts from that, the game in that. And then I saw other people saying like, oh, that whole thing is from this game. Yeah, but that's cool. They're like, that's a good 
interesting way of like incorporating stuff from your other media like with yeah. each other like that's a good thing disney did a good thing with star wars so, yeah there's a lot of other lore that's not the the, the movies or the shows that has good stuff that they should yeah. pull from uh this takes place in a period of time in star wars that i hate <laughs> uh when they just keep adding jedi yeah. that should be dead mm -hmm. um but whatever i have to put that aside sometime I, I, like yeah. like i there's been a lot of media from that like that takes place in that time period that i've like ignored because i just don't like the idea of having all of these jedi alive at, yeah. at that time period um but i guess the whole plot behind this is he's they're trying to kill him yeah like he's he's in at the start of the game he's in hiding yeah and like he gets found out and now he's on the run again um, and I think that makes perfect sense why yeah. they would uh, reference that in Obi-Wan because yeah. it's the same. He's do Obi-Wan's doing the same thing. The game is, like I said before, it's like a Souls-like game, but it's also very much a Metroidvania type game where, you know, you start off out on one planet and then like you can hop between different planets and the more uh, experience you get, the more powers you get, the more abilities you get, you can explore more and more of the planet. Mm -hmm. And just the way the planets are designed and the levels are designed... It 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 does that really like Half Life does this really well too. It like subtly guides you where you need to go, but it doesn't beat you over the head with like arrows and compasses. Yeah, that's and what stuff. I want. I love that. And like, it doesn't really do the yellow paint thing. It like makes it obvious like where you can go and what you need to go, where you need to go. But it doesn't like like I said, it doesn't beat you over the head with it. Yeah, I need that in games. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I want. I want it to feel open, but at the same time, I want to know what I have to do. It does. I will say it does get like very video gamey the level design. Sometimes there's one, there's one level in particular. It does this, It does the classic modern video game thing where you slide down a hill that mm -hmm. every third person video game does. I remember that meme from this game. Yeah, it, it's very egregious in this game. To the there's one level where like you're doing that and you're also like bouncing off of things like Sonic the Hedgehog and the one meme put it to city escape from sonic 2 sonic mm -hmm. adventure 2 because that's basically what happens but but it's fun it's yes. it's just it's very fun it, it's a good challenge but um you can bump down the difficulty if you need to and it's still it's accessible but it also uh gives you a good play experience it's not too easy yeah when you bump it down um the new main character cal kestis I didn't like him at first because he's basically a poor man's Kyle Katarn. And it's, it's Kyle Katarn erasure between this and Rogue One. Yes. But he grows on you. You begin to empathize no, with I him. Like, you begin I like to him. understand him. Yeah. I, I want to know more of his story. It's the reason why I wanted to play the game. Yeah. Uh, all the characters they introduce in this game are very good. Um, it kind of makes me want to play Jedi Survivor. I need to finish this game first. But like, yeah. yeah, it does make me want to play Jedi Survivor, even though like I've heard Jedi Survivor has its own like uh, set of problems. Well, I heard that was also really good, right? But I think it's on a technical level, like between like, yeah, the I'd game imagine they fixed Robert. a lot of yeah. that stuff by now. Yeah. So, um, this is that yeah. launched at thirty frames, I think on I think so console, yeah. or there was like a different yeah. mode or something. I don't I don't know, yeah. but uh, that was like one of the big controversies. Yeah. Um, this is an EA Star Wars game. It's their third Star Wars game. It's it's a weird because when EA got the exclusive Star Wars license for ten years, they put out two Battlefront games and everybody hated them. Mm -hmm. Foreshadowing. <laughs> uh, uh, they put out two Battlefront games. Uh, the first one people didn't really like. The second one people liked even less. And now now we have this like weird third person like single player only game because single player games don't sell according to EA. <laughs> And like it's the respawn team who made Titanfall, which EA clearly doesn't like Titanfall. So like there's like no expectation for this game. Yeah. And it comes out and it's immediately the EA's best selling Star Wars game. It's EA's most critically acclaimed Star Wars game. It, it it's an immediate it's like an instant classic almost. And we almost didn't get this game because EA just doesn't know what to do with Star Wars or Respawn for that matter. This game is, in, in a way, a modern miracle. This probably came very close to being canceled. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because there, there, there's no uh, multiplayer element. No multiplayer element. No real, like... There's no loot boxes. No loot boxes. No real way to, like, you know, get microtransactions out of you. 
for it. It's an old fashioned single player experience. It's a long single player experience. Mm -hmm. Um, and like the, you know, the mindset of like, you know, big triple A gaming is like, that doesn't sell or that doesn't make the money that it needs to. Yeah. Thank God this had the star Wars license. Cause if this was just a regular ass game, it probably wouldn't have sold. No. But I think because it was Star Wars, it it turned people on to not only a good game, but like the genre as a whole. This was my first Souls game, honestly. Not true. We tried doing Dark Souls that one time, but you played it. I was reading you, the strategy you, we guide. We played multiplayer Dark Souls. I read the strategy because guide. Because you were reading the strategy yes. guide to me because the game's so fucking hard. Yeah, you don't but know this is the, the first one got. I like actually like played. Oh, and, and I like, got to a sliding part in this, in yeah. this guy's Let's Play. Yeah, like... This is probably the most like a lot of thanks Uncharted for this. We're like sliding down a hill is like a big part of gaming now. There is a lot of Uncharted in this game. There's a lot of Uncharted. There's a lot of Metroid. There's a lot of Dark Souls. There's a lot of this that is looked, like that looked janky as hell. <laughs> <laughs> there's the rope. This is very Uncharted. Yeah. Also climbing. There's so much climbing in games now. Yeah. Because, thanks to Assassin's Creed and Uncharted. Yeah. This game really is like an amalgamation of like the best games out there, but it's like one of the best amalgamations that you can think of. I've always say like EA is a studio that, that like definitely tries to like ride the coattails of other popular games. Yeah. This is the best they've ever done. It. Well, it's because like, I love star Wars and I don't mind like, like I, it like, I, I, I think the same thing happened with Batman. Like I liked Arkham because it took a lot from other games, but mm. just made it Batman. So you just mm -hmm. take some of the best examples from other games and just make them Star Wars. I'm gonna like it. Right. So that's why I just want to be in this universe and I want to have good mechanics in the universe. That's it. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh. That's why we. So you got it on Xbox. I, I got guess. it on Xbox. I yeah. got it on Steam. Right. Uh. I think probably. Oh, because it was on sale. I got yeah. it on sale like way after it came out. And I wanted to get it so I can try it on the yeah. Steam Deck. I got something. this at launch, and I think I actually got it. I, I think Newegg had a sale on it at launch oh, wow. on Xbox. So I'm like, fuck it, snag it up there. Um, I didn't finish it. Did you get far? I got up to Dathomir, which I think is the halfway point. Darth Maul's homeland. Um, mm -hmm. You can actually go there earlier if you wanted to, but it would be much harder if I didn't do that. I think... This is the last game I was like playing until, and then my daughter was born. Oh, so that's so, no more games. Yeah, exactly. No more so games. I haven't been back to it since. Maybe I will like boot it up. I don't know if I would. I feel like I should just start the game over at this point. I like, like that with Death Stranding. Yeah, I gotta put. I gotta jump back into Death Stranding. Yeah, but I, but like, I, I don't feel know like if, I should just start it over. Yeah, I did buy that on Steam. So if you want to yeah, play Death Stranding, oh, it's great. on Steam. Also, if you want to play this, you can play it. Well, you can't. Well, you don't have a Steam Deck. Yeah, but I got it on Xbox, so I don't need it. Um, That's true. I did boot it up recently because it's one of those games that is uh, Series X compatible, where they upscaled it. When, I don't know what they did to it, but it does look very good. Okay. It looks really nice. It runs really well. Um, I'm happy they like updated it for the next-gen systems because I, it's a game that like should be played and experienced in the best possible way because it is... It is hands down EA's best Star Wars game, and it is one of the best Star Wars games, period. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I like it a lot. I need yeah. to play more, though. I didn't play, I didn't play enough yeah. of it. Yeah. Same. Uh, and I'm going to blame the EA launcher. <laughs> I would have played a lot more of this if the EA launcher didn't right. suck ass. Guys, thanks for watching the backlog. Yeah. Uh, if you're here from the YouTube VOD, come to a podcast sometime. Subscribe to the channel for more backlog. See you later. Bye. Bye. But not you live streamers. Yeah, you you're stay. Stuck, you're stuck with us. Uh, thank you to uh, Thorvindorf. Thank you for the 17 months. Hi, Wolf Bros. Hello. Just Garbo, thank you for the prime. And Rise Frog, thank you for the 36 months. What is up, Wolf Bros? Over this spring break, I managed to get a can get Cammy to master rank in Street Fighter 6. So we are vibing. I was curious if you, uh, you've you played any if I'm curious if <laughs> you have ever played the 3D platformer A Hat in Time. No, I know no, of A Hat I've in Time. I've heard it's good though. I've heard it's good. I have not played it. There are a lot of great platformers out right now Yeah, that I haven't touched. I'm barely playing anything right now. I'm yeah. really slacking. I'm playing, uh, I'm actually playing Dishonored 2 on my Xbox. I ha I've had that for years. 
and I've the first Dishonored game is great. You're want, really you're really in the backlog. Yeah, and I like I wanted to play the second one for years, and I I'm like between games, and I'm like fuck, I just played the Dishonored two, and it is very good. <laughs> yeah, I I could imagine. All right. Anyway, um, what. Else? Razzle Jazzle in the chat says, I mean, even if 99% of the Jedi die in Order 66, doesn't that still leave roughly 100 or so survivors? Wouldn't need a whole damn inqu Inquisition if only a handful lived? And the, the, prob the fucking problem is that Luke Skywalker is the only hope. Now you have all these hopes running around. Well, not necessarily, because they make a big deal about, like, they have all these Jedi, like, during the prequel trail era... And that, but like they make such a big deal about Anakin, like Anakin yeah. is the chosen one. Anakin yeah. is the the one who's gonna save us, and he winds up wiping them all out. I think it, it's the Jedi put such an emphasis on the chosen one, right? Not understanding that their blind faith in their mythology is what ultimately gets them killed, right? So them like repeating that with Luke, the son of the guy who wiped them out is another mistake that they're making right so i understand that yeah but when you're watching episode four and five and six uh under the impression that there is one guy left <laughs> and an old dying uh uh green guy right like this is the only guy who can help out now we're seeing all of these other things and it's like all right well you have like five or six actual guys that if they team up they could probably well, I do mean something Clearly not, because like there there was a team of people who went after Palpatine initially. Mm -hmm. It was Mace Windu, Kit Fisto, and two other guys, and Palpatine wiped them all out. He did so yes. by himself, I might add. Yeah, but it's not like Luke <laughs> did anything crazy either. I, I mean, in Episode Six, when he finally won, he was just like, "Dad, <laughs> I love you," and he's like, "You're right, you're my son." Yeah. And then he did, and then Darth Vader saved everybody. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess you know what he was. You know what? I take it all back. He's the only guy who could have done that. Yeah, <laughs> it's not like uh, uh, what's her name? The the tentacle lady. The the, the oh Ahsoka. It's not like Ahsoka could have walked up to Vader. Oh, and maybe she could have actually. But she could. She could have gone over there and be like, maybe. "I love you, Dad." <laughs> and he would have been. And then he no, would have thrown wait, Palpatine. Wait, no, because in Rebels they fight in Rebels, and I don't think Vader like gives a shit about her anymore. <laughs> so. That, yeah, Fine. there's that. Um, there's a moment in speaking of Obi Wan, and this is the last I'll bring up Obi Wan because I know people hate Obi Wan, but I like, and everybody's wrong about Star Wars, but me. Um, I, I didn't like Obi Wan at the end when like Vader's like telling the Emperor like we like I know where like Obi Wan is alive. I'm gonna hunt him down. And Palpatine's like, no, you won't. You will not do that. The idea is that. Oh, like the Emperor doesn't care that Obi-Wan is alive or that other Jedi are alive. All he cares about is that people think the Jedi are extinct. Yeah. And as long as people think that, then he can keep their his control over um the galaxy. Yeah. So the idea that like there are other Jedi out there, even though they should all be dead, like kind of plays into like living in that world of like an authoritarian regime that is rewriting history in their image to make you think one thing so like we're based we basically learn the story of the galaxy that the emperor wants us to know and throughout all this other media we're seeing the actual truth that like people did survive people did form resistances people are trying to fight back against the empire it makes and sense that's that cool it makes sense that he would just want the few jedi that are around to be scared enough to not yeah show their face and, and whatever and it yeah. kind of worked but it's also goes against everything that we know about the jedi because like they're all little bitches now well <laughs> during that period my favorite scene in the last jedi and yes i'm gonna bring it up is when luke is talk telling ray that the jedi's real legacy is failure and then he he looks right in the camera, 
He looks, he looks at me right in the eye, and he says, at the height of their power, they allowed Darth Sidious to rise, create the Empire, and wipe them all out. He is laying bare that the, the Jedi are too blinded by their own arrogance yeah. that they allow somebody behind the shadows who just wiped them all out blindly and that hit me because he was looking at you because he was looking at me and like you know i was one of those kids who wanted to be a jedi growing up and like all throughout the prequel era like people were saying like yo the jedi kind of suck man and then like luke skywalker himself said it no but that's why i've always loved luke is because he needed to then rebuild the jedi order and in the legend stuff he was like fuck all the old shit we're gonna do all this new cool shit and that's why you have like in the uh uh Kalkatarin games, he learns all the Sith powers because he's like, fuck the old Jedi Order. We can just do whatever we want. There's no rules anymore. And he he tried to rebuild it in the current canon and it failed. And he had to realize he had to accept his failure and learn a new way. And his new way was going out there. I don't not- like how hard he failed. <laughs> he failed a little too hard. In well, yeah, gotta fail pretty hard in order to go into hiding. Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that at all. Uh, not not my Luke. I didn't like that. my Luke. Like I like my Luke. I like two Lukes. I like Jedi Master Luke and I like grumpy ass old man Luke. <laughs> I wish I liked grumpy grumpy ass uh, old man Luke. Uh, no, I didn't read the High Republic, but I am super fucking excited for the Acolyte. It looks really good. I don't. I'm not at all. I what? saw the trailer and I was like, I don't fucking need any of this. <laughs> It, it, I, I didn't even. I, it, it, I don't. I'm good. I don't need that at all. I need to. Wa- apparently, I got a whole season of Mandalorian. I got to watch. I got to finish watching Rogue One. I got plenty of stuff that. You mean I'm, Andor. Andor. Yeah. yeah. I got plenty of stuff that I'm interested in that I would like to see. I still haven't seen Ahsoka yet, and I kind of haven't don't, seen that. I don't know if I want to. I don't know if I want to either. Yeah. Honestly, I think so, Luke's in it. He's not. Three PO's in it. Luke's not in it at all. No, I thought there was like one episode that had a Luke focus. No, why would they? They can't keep doing that <laughs> magic trick. Leave Luke alone. They sh- well, his no. story is over. They should recast Luke. Yes, they should put a new guy there. Ugh. Anyway, Andor and Ahsoka season two in twenty twenty five. I I I'm only like halfway through Andor, and I heard that's like the best thing that's ever came out of the shows i don't know i don't know if it's the best but i will say it makes you appreciate it you watch andor and then you watch like the some of the other stuff they put out and you're like oh god andor is is so much better than it's, like i think that's why i was so turned off by uh the Acoly- acolyte acolyte yeah, acolyte the, the acolyte it's so much so many lightsabers <laughs> just so many yeah. And Andor, uh, Andor had none. Yeah. And I liked that. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't need that. When when right. the lightsaber comes out, you're supposed to go, whoa. Right. And it just desensitizes you from the whoa. Well, you know? the Acolyte takes place during the High Republic, which is the like the Republic's right. most prosperous time. It's when the Jedi were at their peak. I understand. So, like, and it's I un- don't care about that. <laughs> like, that is supposed to be, like, the mythology that they talk about that you don't see. It's the old, it's the lore right. that doesn't need to be right in front of your face. Okay. But I think it's an attempt to demystify the Jedi. I wanted to be mystified. Let me be mystified. <laughs> there should be some things that are mystified. I mean, the Force is still a mystery to most people. Yeah. So. Sure. There you go. Whatever. All right. Uh, turbulent, thanks for gifting us up. I appreciate you. Let's plow through the rest of the news. We're fucking our way off topic yeah. very late now. Uh, but I do want to hear about the Pokemon lawyer talking about uh, fan projects. Yes. The former chief lawyer for the Pokemon company says that fan projects are more likely to be taken down if they get press coverage and start making money. In an interview with Aftermath, former Pokemon general counsel Don McGowan um was asked by uh, how the Pokemon company finds fan projects before issuing them cease and desist orders. Um, McGowan replied that press often did the work for him because when a fan project became popular, its coverage will likely gain more attention. Um, Short answer. uh, Thanks to you folks, he replied. Oh, God. Uh, I would be sitting in my office minding my own business when someone from the company would send me a link to a news article or I would stumble across it myself. I teach entertainment law at the University of Washington and say this to my students. The worst thing on earth is when your fan project gets press because now I know about you. 
McGowan did stress, however, that simply being covered in the press isn't necessarily enough to get a fan project taken down. It's when the developers start trying to make money from the project that the Pokemon company is likely to take that's action. That's kind of good. That's uh, kind of good that it's both. Yeah. Uh, but that's but press coverage is not the end of the equation. He explained, you don't uh, send a takedown right away. You wait and see if they get funded for a, for a Kickstarter or similar. If they get funding, then that's when you engage. No one likes suing fans. That uh, makes perfect sense. We, we, we yes. kind of knew already. It, 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 we're, I'm looking at this at the le- through the lens of other Nintendo takedowns, like yes. uh, uh, lately Yuzu. And we, we were kind of pinning that on the fact that they made a lot of money through Patreon. Yes. And that may, this is kind of checks out with other Pokemon fan games. There's a lot of Pokemon fan games. Yeah. And uh, not all of them take funding. Yeah. It, it kind of sucks to hear that uh, getting coverage leads to it because uh, I mean, it, uh, it makes sense, yeah. but uh, you want, you don't want to gatekeep the cool shit. You want people no, to know yeah. about it. It's, you know? it's a delicate balance. It's a delicate double-edged sword. Cause like on the one hand, yes, you want to, tell people about this cool these cool fan projects but at the same time like you do run the risk of like getting the attention of like you know the people who own the ip yeah and you know you could it, you could get it shut down inadvertently yeah uh but it's just more evidence that if you are running a fan project uh, do not take a dime do not, take, not a dime. take a dime if you're using other ip to sell your product you yeah. are selling a product whether you have a patreon or you have a Kofi or whatever yeah. you, uh, PayPal donation link. Yeah. Uh, you are taking money using someone else's IP that is n- not legal. When Lucas owned Star Wars, he said, "Like I notice people want to make fan films. I, the, my my only rule is as long as you don't profit off of it, you can do whatever you want with Star Wars." Yeah. And that's when we got like the golden age of like Star Wars fan films. There was like thousands of them four of them were good but like there were just like just a litany of star wars fan films yeah. this is in opposed to star trek who paramount sent out like this entire rule book of like what you can and cannot do with star trek fan films number one is don't make money but number two three four five and six were like all these little things that like you have to get approval from them for yeah and this is nonsense like i think back in the day there was a lot of star trek stuff and yeah. there was very little star wars stuff no, there was a lot of Star Wars because Lucas didn't care as long as you didn't make money. Well, yeah, but official Star Wars stuff, there wasn't anything. Well, there were the movies and like the expanding universe. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, Star yeah. Trek, like they had the shows. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess there's just a lot of shows. They had them a lot, a lot of, of shows. So it show, might have yeah. been a little more confusing what's yeah. real and what's not. But for Star Wars, it's like you got them. You got six movies. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> but now there's a million Star Wars things. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, so. It's cool to see an official word that they are actually looking at people trying to get money. I yeah. hope that this is like a little bit of a wake up call to people who are doing fan projects because I want more fan projects. Yes. I like fan projects. I want those to keep going and I don't want them to shoot themselves in the foot. I don't yeah. want them to, to go away. Anyway. Uh, Edward Bova says, Bob, what about donations? Some of these fan projects I see ask for... That's, what I, that's literally what I'm talking about. It, you can't the donations are making a profit off yeah of another person you, you can definitely argue that like that's a revenue stream it is yeah. no it, it absolutely is because people are arguing that patreon is donations yeah. but like that's clearly a revenue stream mm-hmm. off of somebody else's intellectual property okay uh next up let's talk about summer games fest jeff Keeley, baby's yeah. back in it uh E3 may be dead, but Summer Games Fest is alive and well and will return Look at um, this year, June 7th, with another live and live stream show happening at the YouTube Theater in Los Angeles. Summer Games Fest 2024 will be a cross-platform live showcase of game announcements, trailers, and more. Details on who will be there and what they'll be showing off haven't been revealed yet. Um, have, to, uh, have to have some surprises after all, but the show will run for two hours. And as a vet founder and host, Jeff Keighley put it, uh, serve up a showcase of what's next for video games. The rise of Summer Games Fest has been quite the thing to see. Nearly 30 years, uh, E3, the Electronic Entertainment Expo, uh, was the preeminent video game showcase in North America. Uh, but its dominance began to wane in the mid-2010s due to a mix of rising costs, growing popularity of live streaming, the advent of more consumer-focused events like PAX, and because you know, they just generally suck. Watch Bob's video about it. Oh, yes. Um, 
The move to open the show to the uh, yeah, we know all about like E3. Yeah, and it's, it's, okay. All right, so Summer Games Fest is coming back. Yeah, here's the here's, the, here's the official tweet for it. Yeah, uh, June seventh, uh, live streamed uh, at two p.m. Pacific time. Yeah, uh, it's two yeah a two hour showcase of what's so Summer Games Fest in the past was like a month long. I don't yeah. remember it only being a two hour live stream. This is new to me. Well, I think this is the. St- start of it okay and then like there'll be like events throughout like the week okay because um taking place immediately after summer games this will be the day of the dev summer game fest edition a showcase of more than a dozen incredible games from game developers of all different backgrounds so yeah there's going to be more to it than just the two-hour showcase okay uh i'm not expecting many great things to come out of that even the last Summer Games Fest was just like a weekend event. It was like yeah. three days, I think. It, it was. I don't. I can't. I can't tell you one game that like was there that was like, yeah. I can tell you, uh, Sonic Superstars. Was but that at, was that was at a Summer Games? Fest. Yeah, I didn't even know that. <laughs> I think, or was it Sonic Frontiers? Last year would have been Superstars. There was a Sonic game that debuted at Summer yeah. Games Fest, and people were like trying to sneak footage of it because okay. they weren't allowed. I to I mean, get if it was last year, then it was probably Superstars. I don't know. It was a whole event, yeah. and I remember there really wasn't any games like at all. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, two hour long. Probably not going to be much coming right from this. I'm going to be uh uh coming back from Vegas, I think, on this on this day. Yeah. So uh, I'm pro- I'll probably miss it. Oh well, so I guess they're not doing like a whole in-person event like they did. No, they, they'll you can go to um you can go to Summer Games Fest live. Oh, like, it. Okay, yeah. So they'll probably have like things for you to see. There. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then, then okay. Is it gonna be that weekend? Yeah. Okay. The tickets go on sale May seventh. Never mind. Yeah. Never mind them. All right, let's move on to Tim Sweeney, a friend of the All show. All right, uh, Valve is currently embroiled in a U.S. antitrust lawsuit with Wolffire, not us, a developer mm-hmm. that alleges Steam platform holder. What is the this Steam picture pla- of Gabe right here? I have no idea. All right, <laughs> Valve is currently embroiled in a U.S. antitrust lawsuit with Wolffire, not us, a developer that alleges the Steam platform holder uh, uses its portion. Uh, its position to unfairly crowd out rivals and control game prices. Valve tried to have a suit dismissed, but in May uh, 2022, the court ruled it had to go ahead uh, with some charges and enter discovery phase. The juiciest part of the legal process where, among other things, plenty of internal correspondence from the companies involved uh, is made public. Among these documents are a couple of spicy exchanges (laughs) between Epic CEO and my friend Tim Sweeney, Valve CEO Gabe Newell, um, Valve COO Scott Lynch, and project manager Eric Johnson. Um, For the context for both exchanges is broadly speaking uh, store prices and specifically the commission that Valve takes on Steam sales which are some of Sweeney's favorite topics. Uh, the first chain in 2017 is sparked specifically by a leaked comment uh, from Steam's developer forum in which Valve's Sean Jenkins mistakenly said Steam may start restricting the keys it gives to developers. On August 12, 2017, uh, Gabe Newell emails Tim Sweeney, anything we do, anything we doing to annoy you, uh, we're guessing Sean Jenkins' public dumbness might be part of it oh. sweeney replies to newell and valves eric johnson saying he's not annoyed and i've never heard of steve jenkins poor uh, sean jenkins poor sean then sweeney adjusts his flight goggles and gets ready for takeoff <laughs> on one of his pet peeves the 30 percent platform fees on steam there is a there was a good case for such fees in the early days right sweeney but the scale is now high and operating costs have been driving have been driven down while the churn of new game releases is so fast that the brief marketing or UA value uh, the storefront provides is far disproportionate to the fee. Sweeney opines that if you were to strip away the top 25 selling games on Steam, I bet, I bet Valve made more profit from most of the next 1,000 than the developers themselves made. The maths to get there is 30% to, okay, whatever. There's a lot of math talk. Uh, if either Valve if either Valve employee replied to Sweeney, uh, it is not disclosed, which may be why when we get to December 2018, Sweeney is even more ornery. At this time, <laughs> Valve has introduced a royalty change that almost seems uh, custom designed to get Sweeney frothing at the mouth. It reduced Valve's cut uh, on its most successful games down to 20%. Not only is Sweeney all about the little guy, 
at uh, at this exact moment in time, he's gearing up for the launch of the Epic Game Store and the fight against um, Epic and Oh, so Apple. they didn't even have the Epic Game Store yes. yet. Okay. Sweeney is emailing Gabe and Scott Lynch and begins to out by outlining his problems with Apple before telling them about the imminent launch of the Epic Game Store. This is a direct competitor to Steam and credit where credit's due. Epic is... Uh, puts his money where Sweeney's mouth is by launching uh, with a flat 12% platform fee. Sweeney wants Valve to respond to this mainly because it'll strengthen Epic's hand against Apple, but he's clearly not had too many lessons in gentle art of persuasion. All right, here's here's where oh, things this get good. This is good. Uh, Sweeney writes, right now, you assholes are telling the world that the strong and powerful get special terms while 30% is for the little people. We're all in for a pro for the prolonged battle if Apple tries to keep their monopoly and 30% by cutting backroom deals with big publishers to keep them quiet. Why not give all developers a better deal? What better way is there to convince Apple uh, quickly than their uh, that their model is now totally untenable? The next day, Valve Scott Lidge simply sends this email to both Gabe Newell and Eric Johnson with one line commentary. You mad, bro? This is fucking <laughs> awesome. <laughs> This is so cool. <laughs> oh, man. It's nice when, like, you know, high-ranking people at major companies, like, talk like normal people yeah. and, like, call each other assholes and, like, be like, yo, you mad, bro? But, like, you can completely understand, at, like, both sides. You can understand what's happening. Like, I yes. want, like, Tim Sweeney, uh, I like what he's doing. I, I like mm -hmm. what he's trying to do here. He's trying to get everybody a better cut across all platforms. Yes. But he's talking to Gabe and Valve, who have arguably like the best position in games right now. Yeah, uh, as as a platform. Yes. Um, and there is zero reason for Valve to cut the 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 cost to for development. Yeah. To, for de the, the amount that they pay developers. Yeah. There's no reason for them to give developers more money because they're they're in such a good position. Yeah. And then and then they even were like, you know what, Tim Sweeney, you're right. We will. Uh, give a better deal to the highest paid stuff yeah. because that was tim sweeney's original argument but now yeah. he's like no fuck you it's not good enough we yeah. gotta give it to little people and he's right yeah and, but valve's also right <laughs> so like the, it's it's the whole the whole thing yeah. is crazy and what was even the lawsuit that brought this up it Wolf was Fire? wolf fire who's like suing valve for like you know basically holding a monopoly on like pc game storefronts Oh, I mean, okay. they don't really have one anymore because of uh, Epic and uh, GOG is now bigger than ever. And like other companies have like PC storefronts, but like most things li link back to Steam. Yeah, so, like, I would. I mean, a monopoly is what, 90%? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if they're 90%, but they're very high. And yeah. Steam, Steam has a has a very big cut of the, the yeah. market. Uh. But that's awesome. I love that uh, we got a, a hand at this exchange. Yeah. What is this? Partner.steamgames.com. Why are you sending me? They're free to generate keys and you can sell off platform. I don't, what are you talking about? Why are you sending me this? Uh, I will say that uh, there was part of the article that said that uh, Valve was going to lower the amount of keys that they gave to developers or something. Yeah. Valve does give developers like a shit ton of keys. Yeah. keys for for their games which should be they, they, all these platforms uh are really weird about game keys and giving yeah. developers keys to give people and nintendo is the worst out of them because whenever uh a company wants to give us keys and we say we want the switch key that's the most scarce yeah they get like a hundred uh nintendo switch keys where they will get a thousand steam keys you know but if you think about it, it's a, it's 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 not a real product. It's a digital yeah foot. It's a that's digital why, thing. That's why I never understood. Like, yeah. how do you run out of a digital good? So there there is an inventory, right. but why? <laughs> it's a it's data that yeah. can be copied infinitely. Yeah, and like once a key is used, like obviously you can't use it again. But like, there's nothing saying like. After like a time has passed, you regenerate the same key and use it again. Yeah, wipe it and give it yeah. a, give it to somebody else. There there is finite resources because the, the, there's a server space right, and like yeah. you know Valve is 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 giving you the space. But uh -huh. like if you're taking thirty percent of the fucking money, 
let me have yeah. a million keys. Maybe give me a amount of keys proportional to how much I'm selling. Yeah. Something like that. But still, it, they, you should get a lot of keys if, yeah. if you're, if it, because, because there's, there's not a lot of resources going into that. Like what's a, th copying a thousand, uh, uh, game codes should not take up i mean people are downloading them i guess yeah. that's a thousand a thousand times 50 gigabytes if that's how much Something your game like that, is yeah. whatever they got the resources uh all right moving on uh battlefront classics apparently is terrible yeah uh aspire is under fire uh for this that for the disaster they've launch. been fucking up i don't know what happened really bad they, yeah they were we loved them yeah. for like a little bit yeah they were doing great work you know why it was because th these old games that we loved uh were finally getting ported to newer consoles yes. and they were doing a decent job yes at the first couple and now all of a sudden they're doing a uh, horrible yes job. um aspire is under fire for the disastrous launch of the highly anticipated star wars battlefront classic collection which is plagued with server issues bugs and more Launching March 14th, the $35 Classic Collection, which includes the two original Battlefront games, currently has a mostly negative rating on Steam with just 21% of reviews being positive. Headlining most complaints are connectivity issues, a myriad of Steam and social media uh, users claiming that three 64-player servers were available at launch for the almost 10,000 players who logged into Steam alone. Aspire seemingly added more servers within a few hours of the launch, but problems were rampant. Uh, one user said was only able to join one Heroes versus Villains match, and the Heroes side was completely broken. No one could join the Heroes team, which resulted in no one uh, to fight against. I was I figured this may have been just a Battlefront 2 issue, so I hopped over to Battlefront 1 multiplayer. There's zero servers up for Battlef Battlefront 1. Wow. Uh, yeah, so 10,000 people playing on launch day, only three servers for 64 players. What? Um, the multiplayer doesn't really work very well. It, it, does this work like old PC games where there you when you want to play multiplayer, a list of servers comes up? Is, is, is it like that? I guess. I mean, you would imagine that a more modern video game would work like a modern video game yeah the problem is like aspire even the early ones that they ported over to the switch yeah. uh even like i, I liked their <laughs> port of jedi uh night yeah. uh but uh, it's it, still very much a pc game yeah it was literally just they ported the pc yeah. they didn't do any work to it it yeah. was just the pc game was ported over so much so that you can plug a keyboard in and play it with a keyboard yeah and that's not an intended functionality. That's yeah. just something that they forgot that they left in the game. Uh, so so I, they don't do anything to the game. Even uh, their port of uh, Nice Little Republic um, was a port of the first uh, broken version of Knights of the Old Republic yeah. that had a, a glitch where you couldn't get past like the second half of the game. Yeah. And they left that in because they, they didn't, actually yeah. do anything to the game they just yeah. ported it over so uh oh, that's probably what they did here one reddit user said aim controls uh make it unplayable multiplayer the complete lack of aim assist um there's one in solo mode uh makes it awful it's been designed for controllers of the original xbox era but the price point is high and nothing has been touched on this front and they go on to know that, the, yeah, that must the game be the pc version bug, uh, where the respawn timer gets stuck on one, saying it happened on three of their five games with only a full relaunch server as a fix. Uh, they also reported missing cutscenes in the campaign, split screen being limited to two players instead of four, flight controls being inverted with no option to change, sound issues where it spikes uh, and then mutes, and more. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a downright buggy-ass mess. Uh, Aspire responded... Uh, releasing a statement saying that they experienced critical errors with its network infrastructure as an explanation for why the PC version launched with just three 64-player servers for the 10,000 fans who logged in upon release. Since launch, we've been working to address these issues and increase network stability. Uh, we will continue our efforts until our network infrastructure is stabilized to prevent further outages. That is something that should have been done before the game was launched. I really hate when... A game launches and there's server issues. Yeah, it's like <laughs> like you're launching the game, 
you know people are gonna play it especially a game that like is multiplayer focused by now we should anticipate a surge in in usage yeah you know you, you'll never be able to anticipate exactly how many people but like how hard would it be to ramp up the server usage the yeah. first <laughs> couple weeks that the game's out is going to be the most uh server usage you're gonna get <coughs> usually ever yeah so but that's not all no i see there's more controversy for that yes uh this is a tweet from kyber uh, battlefront 2 custom servers the modding community we are saddened to see the abhorrent treatment and blatant exploitation of modders uncredited work in star wars battlefront classic collection aspire assured the community that this would not happen after suspicious Suspicions were aroused prior to launch. Despite this, it is evident that content created by the community has found its way into the full price launch version of the game without credit or compensation. Star Wars Battlefront has a deep and established modding legacy and we will not stand by as it is tarnished by bad actors looking for a quick buck. So they also quote tweeted, uh, I am Shyaman, who says, seriously, Aspire, I'm beginning to feel insulted. Nintendo Switch launched with just straight up all my hero stuff from my mod. I, I'm trying to understand what exactly was 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 done. Same glitches and bugs we've data minded, and it's the exact same files, just using the proper lightsaber attacks animations. Uh, this is before patch. So I guess it's uh, modded in moves. Yeah. Uh, to back up uh, his claim, uh, here's a screenshot of that bubble effect taken in 2020. It's hard to make out in the video since it's in motion, but trust that it's the same. Uh, to add on one final time, the patches on every console that were designed to remove their content actually hasn't removed them. They're still in the files, just uh, going unused now. Oh, so they took, they, did they take it off or no? They just hit it. They hit it. They hit it. They're still they're still in the game. They haven't taken it out. It's yeah. still there and accessible. Okay. Uh yeah, that's uh piss poor. That's that's probably even more egregious than They've gotten incred I mean, they were already pretty lazy. They've gotten yeah. incredibly lazy now. That's absolutely unacceptable. Yeah. It's it's incredible that like like how But it goes to show you how great the modern community is. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Sometimes better than Yes. <laughs> the, the actual developers. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's... that's. Uh, I'd imagine this game is just like a port running through an emulator or something. Probably. And they just haven't optimized yeah. it like at all. All right, so don't buy that. No. Uh, another reason to emulate. Yes, absolutely. Um, or I think the Xbox versions are backwards compatible. Okay. Right, let, me, let me just double check Hopefully that Hopefully there's some uh, custom servers or something. Yeah. While you double check that, I'm gonna go fire off the last couple of stories. Yes, uh, Star Wars Battlefront One and Two, including the DLC, are playable on Xbox Series and Xbox One. Okay. So just get the original Xbox versions. GTA Six is most important game release in industry history. Analyst says yes. I uh, yes, <laughs> of course. Uh, the Haley Williams isn't that isn't she from Paramore? Whoa! Yeah. Uh, the games industry isn't in the best shape at the moment, which with cost cutting measures leading to layoffs, studio closures, and game cancellations, and there are few major titles on the way to shore up sales. Maybe everybody's just afraid to release because they're anticipating Grand Theft Auto 6. Maybe. Um, in an interview with GameIndustry.biz, industry analyst Matt Piscatella has said that GTA 6 might end up being an incredibly important release for the industry at large. Piscatella, who works for a tracking firm Sir Kana says 2024 isn't looking great for the games industry with overall spending expected to dip by anywhere from 2% to 10%, uh, depending on how optimistic you are. Dip down? Oh, no, dip by that much. Okay. Yeah. There's so much uncertainty with how, w when you look at the sales data or look to project this year, P Piscatella says. There's uncertainty around the hardware. There's uncertainty around the content. Who the hell's making the games? <laughs> that uncertainty is un underscored by the this year's two biggest games so far, Power World and Helldivers 2, neither of which were expected to be such big hits. Uh, despite their unexpected success, Piscatella says the industry would need another game at a level similar at a similar level of success for overall sales to match the numbers driven by last year's blockbuster hit, Hogwarts Legacy. 
when it comes to comparable titles, 2024 is looking a little thin with many of the industry's most highly anticipated releases not due out until 2025 at the earliest. Quote, the uncertainty level this year is probably the highest I can recall with the uncertainty of what's going to get us to the finish line because we don't know because you don't have those big games announced that we know he says when people are saying our slates going to be light this year that's not something that usually happens yeah i know that's yeah i'm I, actually pretty scared while this year is definitely looking rough for the industry piscatel is optimistic about the future with one major 25 release already set to be massive grand theft auto 6 we're going to be we're going to get a renowned batch of interest uh renewed batch of interest with grand theft auto 6 in particular he explains there's probably never been a more important thing to ever release in the industry. So no pressure. <laughs> I will also add that we're expecting a whole new Nintendo console next yes. year. So I'm sure that will also bring with it a whole lot yes. of other games or interest in video games. Yeah, I think. Uh, and also, I'm sure we just talked about rumors of the PlayStation uh, 5 Pro. We know that Xbox has something cooking up. This year is going to be light for all of those reasons. Yes. Next year, we're going to have all this new content. Mm -hmm. We're going to probably have to take a hit this year for the next year to be even better. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if GTA 6 is going to be the most important game release of all time, but it's probably going to be the most important game release of this generation. I think it will be the biggest game release It'll of all time. It'll be the biggest, yeah. yes, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's been like, what, like, 12 years since the last one yeah what was the most important game release of all time uh the original super mario brothers the original yeah. donkey kong but like they probably didn't know during development that that was no. like a big deal yeah grab that thought of six they know like this is gonna yeah. be the biggest thing in the world yeah um so that doesn't really mm -hmm. surprise me too much i i am thinking that i'm going to uh, when I when I do my video on PAX and all the games that I'm playing at PAX, mm -hmm. I might call that video something like uh, this year is really bad for games or this year is yeah. uh, something like that. And I want to ask all of the developers, like, what do you think's going on this year with yeah. all the uh, layoffs and all the uh, lack of games this year? Mm -hmm. Like, what's it like being a developer in, in, in this year specifically? Yeah. Because I want to hear people talk about how shitty the industry is. Right Especially now. from, like, the indie side of things. Because, like, you know they don't have the resources that like the big companies. It might have. be completely different. They yeah. might not even feel any of the yeah. any of the problems. They might be in a better situation than you know the people at the AAA studios. Yeah. They also might be in a worse situation. Yeah. I saw uh, some people saying that it's like almost impossible to get funding right now because yeah. I guess some indie people need funding. Yeah, uh, some indie people just fucking do it their own way. Mm -hmm. Anyway, last thing, Denu Denuvo, everybody's favorite. Yes. Uh, what is it again? Um, uh anti anti piracy piracy okay. yes uh de nuvo uh adds watermarking to help developers trace leakers yes uh the product called tracemark for games was announced at gdc uh tracemark can be used to mark builds of games both with visible and invisible watermarks uh each with a unique id which can be traced back to the source it is intended to be used during the pre-release phase of a game uh such as in initial builds uh internal builds closed betas or review copies being able to trace down source uh sources of leaked content makes potential leakers think twice um trace mark can be used with de nuvo's anti-tamper software which parent company uh irdito said will allow uh developers to control distribution of pre-release content this innovative solution not only marks a significant milestone for the company but also represents a leap forward in protecting the creative and financial investments of game developers worldwide um de nuvo has been controversial thanks to its tendency to affect performance of piece of games on pc memorably resident evil village came under fire in 2021 after the pirated drm free cracked version of the game performed better than the official version yeah, so everybody hates De, de Nuvo because it uh, is a big system hog. It, it uses system resources yeah. that could otherwise be used to render the game. Mm -hmm. uh, I imagine the same would be said for development versions. If it's going to add a watermark like this, it's probably going to... It's an extra step that is yes. going to be a pain in the ass for developers. But uh seems a little necessary because they are heavily affected by leaks. Yes, it, I mean, this is definitely more necessary than their traditional DRM yeah. thing. But at the same time, like... 
I feel like this could, I mean, this could also lead to problems. Like this could be, you I'd know, like to know it, from the developer side. Uh, how does this affect development? Yeah, yeah, because I'd imagine an extra step is just going to be annoying. But also, is it going to run worse? Yeah. It's possible. Anyway, that's the end of our news. We finally did yeah. it now. Oh, thank God. Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Quit of the week! This is by Club Moss. It says, teacher band performing the at the high school battle of the bands. <laughs> it's it's the 311 Tidy Band concert. It literally sounds like a cover it band. It does. It doesn't even look like the guy from no. 311 anymore. Jesus. Anyway, there was a I, I think it was in Vice. There was an article about like the 311 day cuz every year on March 11th they do a 311 concert. So their thing, everyone goes and gets high and watches through. Don't didn't they do a cruise? Yes. Okay. But this was an article about the 311 concert that they had in 2020. It was oh. in Las Vegas. And the next day was when like everything shut down. Oh, uh, oh. So yeah. is it their fault? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was just funny because like everyone was like yeah, things are weird right now. Not as many people as I thought it would be. Like, yeah, I've heard of this virus, but I don't know. Is it like serious or whatnot? And then, like the next day, like shut down everything. So people were just stuck in Las Vegas. And the oh. last, I feel like, you know how the meme was like the last movie I saw before lockdown was Sonic the Hedgehog. I feel like the last band you saw before lockdown was Three Eleven. It's somehow more embarrassing. That's that's all. That's very embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, there was a band called anal cunt yes that did a song called 311 sucks <laughs> and that's all i ever think about when i hear 311 uh, because that band is uh, uh anal cunt is a horrible band are, yeah but that song is pretty accurate <laughs> <laughs> to how 311 sounds 311 is like a good like middle school band or like high school band like you listen to them when you're young and you think they're cool i think of dave mira's bmx triple yes. x or something when i think of them and then like you, you grow up a little bit and you're like or maybe one song's cool but everything else is like <laughs> kind of i actually didn't hate the tiny band that clip from the tiny yeah. band concert i didn't hate it but it did seem like a bunch of yeah uh dads if there are three eleven fans in the chat, you know, Creatures is a good song. You I know, like Creatures. I have to say, I'm seeing a lot of TikTok clips of Limp Biscuit live, <laughs> and they got it. Yeah, they have gotten better, <laughs> dude. Limp Biscuit has never. They, yeah. They're they're good. Yeah, now. <laughs> I would see Limp Biscuit live. I would see. I would see them live. My tweet promoting the show was a Limp Biscuit oh, song okay. lyric. It was a uh, go ahead and talk shit. Okay. Talk shit about me. My I, generation. I saw a bunch of TikTok clips and some of them were like some obscure songs and I was like, I know these. How do I? These, yeah. There's like bringing out songs that I do. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, now we'll talk to you guys. Yes. Real quick. We got to start with people who have comments on last week's Wolf Den Podcast or on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Podcast. Like Caleb Fox says, Will, what all do you do with your backed up Blu-rays? Do you have a home media server? No, but I really, I want to, and I should create like a home media server, like get a, like a NAS raid and just like have it, you know, accessible because I have take, all, take an old computer. Yeah. I have like all these movies and like uh, that's what TV I, with shows. My old yeah. MacBook, I, this my server. I have all these old movies and TV shows that like, I want to like just stream and it'd just be easier if like I can play it on my iPad, but I can't. You know, because they're all they're all disc based. So and it would be good to just like back it all up because like I don't, you know, think I'm affected by disc rot just yet, but I'm starting to read more articles about like disc rot is becoming more and more prevalent, you know, because DVDs are over like twenty years old at this point. Um yeah. what is it a dampness thing? Like what's the problem with uh... No, it's just like a, a DVD will just if you just it sits there, used or unused, like it'll just start to decay. Like the data on it will actually just start to decay. Oh, great. Yeah. Love that. So, uh, Moonlighter min Minis in the chat said, I mean, in the last week's World Down podcast comments, it's really important to me that you guys think that 
It's really important to me that you guys think that Batman fucking ruled because I think it fucking ruled and that happens so rarely <laughs> with superhero stuff lately, especially DC live action stuff that I started to wonder if I really think it ruled or I was coping. I saw it with Hannah. Uh huh. She hates everything. Right. And she liked that movie. Yes. And it was like three hours. Yes. So the the there was a very low probability that she was going to like that movie. Yeah. Also, it's nerd shit. Yeah. Uh, my wife, my wife, nice. Uh, <laughs> she, uh, I love you, honey, but I gotta call you out. She falls asleep, okay. like when we watch the movie. Understand. Understandable. Like we're old. Like we have kids. Like we get tired. Um, she, we watched this at night after the kids went to bed. Again, three hour movie. Stayed up the whole fucking time on the edge of her seat. Go, whoa. Yeah. And then afterwards, we watched a deleted scene with the Joker and Arkham. And she's like, whoa. Yeah. So like, yeah, the movie's good. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Draco. God, what the hell's your name? <laughs> Dr Draco Saint. Dra Croissant. Yeah. Drac Croissant. Draco Saint. Whatever. Here's a fun fact that ho that ropes in Dragon Ball and piracy. The cartel liter literary literally run their own broadcast station where they broadcast Dragon Ball illegally. But if you look at the numbers, South America is tied with Japan for the amount of sales with Japan. The governor even bought every single citizen a Crunchyroll account for the final for the finale of Dragon Ball Super. What the <laughs> fuck? People rented out IMAX theaters and played it there even. Hell, the cartel even agreed to a ceasefire because of Toriyama's passing. Dragon Ball is huge over there and is pirated so much, and yet it matches Japan in sales volume. I remember hearing about the, uh, the pirated thumb drives. Yeah. I, I think it's Brazil. Uh, yes. I don't know, but they would... Uh, Basically, the whole country would would uh, pass around a thumb drive that just has all this like pirated shit on yeah. it, and like every month they would renew it. Like someone would cross the border with a thumb drive, and then it would get spread throughout everybody. Um. Anyway, uh, tap 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 in the chats. Uh, last week's what that podcast says. As a dude who just started putting my backlog into a spreadsheet and has never met or heard of anyone else who does that, this made me feel better about my life. Tour. Well, I'm glad. Glad we can help. I need to fix our hours. Uh, yeah, I haven't. I mean, I haven't bought a game in a while, so I haven't added anything. I have years of games. To play on. <laughs> <laughs> Artemis I, Ames yeah. says those Wolf Den snapbacks go hard. The one you're wearing. It's a. Uh, is it still considered a snapback if it's Velcro? I thought snapback was like the old, like the old school plastic version. I don't. I don't know how that works. I don't uh, know hats. I just wear them. Anyway, now we're in the chat. Yes. I do know DVD RW have an organic layer. Oh my God. Yeah. And, and I don't know if like Blu-rays are susceptible to disc rot like DVDs are. I know they're more durable, but I don't know if that necessarily means that like they won't decay. Over. Yeah, they won't last long. We don't know. Uh, Limp Bizkit is not welcome in Australia since they got someone killed in the mosh by... Frenzying the crowd on purpose. Okay, Yikes. great. Uh, so, Bob, are you going to be doing a special Twitch stream in honor of oh, Super Wii U Super Mario Maker fan? No, I'm not. <laughs> there, there, there is one uh, Wii U Mario Maker level yeah. left to be beaten. Some people are saying that that's not real. Like, that there are more levels but i can't find any yeah. evidence of that i'm pretty sure there is just one level that needs to be beaten yeah um and then will are you excited for the release of x-men 97 i wasn't until i saw the trailer and the theme song kicked in that theme song does a lot of heavy lifting <laughs> let me tell you yeah is the theme song no that theme song is one it, of the best it, it kicks ass underscore says there were rumors of cheating for the uh Honestly, it I don't think it matters. Yeah, at this point, who cares? As like, long as level gets beaten, yeah, like I don't think it matters. The game's getting shut down anyway. Yeah. So it's like who cares at this point? People can glitch level uploads. Like they can you know how you have to beat the level in order to upload it. Yeah. People can glitch 
their way through the level so that it can get uploaded. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think those levels get banned or deleted anyway, so yeah. the, the, it doesn't really count. Like I was thinking, like if somebody could beat the level, even if they're using like a TAS, like yeah, the level gets beaten. You know, that still. I like how they started the new trailer with the previously on X Men. That's cool. yeah, that is cool. That's cool. Yeah. Pass isn't allowed for Team Zero Percent. Okay, that's fine. They 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 they're not allowed to do it. I just think it would be cool if there's just not a single Mario Maker level that has not been beaten. I yeah. think that that even just that metric is fine because there's gonna be people who beat these levels that aren't on stream and you don't yeah. know how they beat the level you know you can't prove it um all right uh, i need you bros tonight lost my job and now i don't know what to do get another one yeah <laughs> <laughs> put your head to the grindstone and just apply everywhere yeah, doesn't matter a, where it's probably you yeah. know i think um Pretty much every time I have quit or gotten fired from a job, uh, it has led to something much better. Yes. I think every single time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's a period of shittiness. Yeah. But it always led to something much better. Mm -hmm. That might not have even happened if I didn't lose the job. Yeah. So I don't don't worry too much. Yeah. You'll be you'll be fine. Did we get ripped off by MIG Switch? Maybe. I'm still waiting on mine. I don't know where oh, I yeah? yeah. Apparently, so here's the thing. Here's a, well, a weird thing about MIG Switch. Mm -hmm. the, that's, the, that's the flash card for the Switch. Yeah, yeah. Um, they claimed they were not going to sell them. They said, we are going to give them to licensed distributors and they will sell them. Okay. Now they are selling them on their own website. Okay. But I had already pre ordered it from one of their random weird websites that sells it. Right. So. I'm I'm weirded out by that. Okay. That weirds me out. A Ooh. few people have started to get them, but I'm waiting as well. Yeah, I don't I don't I'm very confused. Also, I don't think it's very useful without the uh dumper. So it used to it was gonna come <laughs> I'm sorry with the, yeah, the, the dumper. Please, this is very serious. <laughs> the ROM cart was supposed to come with a dumper, a big dumper. <laughs> and, and they decided we can't sell it with the dumper anymore. It's too big. It has to be separate. So now you have to purchase your dumper separately. I don't know why you're. I don't know why you're laughing. Why am I laughing at this so hard? Oh my god! Retro Game Core has a good video on it. Okay, doesn't include the dumper, uh, but even he says it's useless without the dumper. Right. All right. <laughs> He's two seats on a point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, thanks for hanging out, everybody. We're done. Yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Dead podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Dead and youtube.com slash Wolf Dead podcast. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Dead podcast. So you can go and watch us over there on demand whenever you want. But if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube Podcasts, audible.com anywhere and everywhere you get audible podcasts from but no matter where you get your podcast from folks please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because how else is with placement on all those respective platforms can you see the tears in my eyes <laughs> crying so much eps 5000 says will is so immature dumper isn't even that funny of a word <laughs> he put dumper in quotes <laughs> uh. and we just proved you wrong yeah uh thanks for being here everybody uh we'll see y'all later uh we will raid uh oh you know beta 64 he raids me all the time we gotta raid him he's playing freaking pikmin always playing these nerd games uh thanks for being here i will be at pax this weekend i'm gonna i guess try to stream tomorrow maybe i don't know uh we'll see but i won't be streaming thursday or sunday so uh bye Bye. Come, come find me. How do I leave? There we there go. You go.